welcome everyone uh, to the Zoning Board of Adjustment um, regular meeting. Today is Tuesday, November 9th, 2021. And um, Mr. Adelani, would you please call us to order? I'd be happy to. Thank you. This meeting is being held in compliance with the Open Public Meetings Act, Chapter 231, Public Law 1975. Adequate notice of this meeting has been provided to the Coaster and Asbury Park Press by publication of the annual meeting notice and posted on the Munici Municipal Bulletin Board and Municipal website. All notices are on file with the Board's Secretary. Uh, I ask everyone please to mute their cell phones for the duration of the meeting and fire exits are located on the east and west sides of the Council Chambers as well as the back of the building. Please call us to order, Irina. Thank you. Uh, Daniel Harris? Here. Brittany Ashman is absent. Tim Slick? Here. Jill Potter? Is recused. Is recused and also absent. Uh, Wendy Glasson? Here. Catherine Minardini is absent. Bonnie Nutt? Here. Russell Lewis? Here. And Christopher Avalos? Here. Thank you, everyone. All right, so we have a few housekeeping issues first before we get on to the application. Um, if anyone's here for the Justin Needon Dunluey Street application, it will not be heard tonight. I'll make a motion to carry the application Chairman, to, yes. Well, we need to acquire jurisdiction first. Okay, okay. please I do. Re I reviewed the submissions, the notices are in proper form. The board has jurisdiction to proceed with the matter. So we're good. Okay, so I'll make a motion to carry the, the Dunluey Street, 830 Dunluey Street application to January 11th, 2022. I'll second. Without further notice? Without further notice. Thank you. I'll second. Thank you. I have a motion by Christopher Avaloni and a second by Russell Lewis. Uh, shall we take roll for this? Jeff? Please. Daniel Harris? Yes. Tim Slick? Yes. Wendy Glassman? Yes. Bonnie Nutt? Yes. Russell Lewis? Yes. And Christopher Avaloni? Yes. Okay, thank you. Application carried to January 11, 2022. All right, we have some minutes to approve. Um, I'll make a motion to approve the minutes of September 14, 2021. I'll second. Okay, and everyone present is eligible to vote. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. Minutes memorialized for September 14, 2021. I'll make another motion to approve the minutes of February 23rd, 2021. I'll second. Thank you. And everyone here is uh, eligible to vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Minutes of February 23rd, 2021 uh, memorialized. And finally, and finally, I'll make a motion to approve the minutes of January 26, 2021. I'll second. Thank you. And again, everyone here is eligible to vote. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. Minutes of January 26, 2021 memorialized. All right, so um, we now have the 1117 Sunset Avenue application. Do we have jurisdiction? To hear yes, uh, Mr. Chairman, I reviewed the notices there in proper form. Uh, we have jurisdiction to proceed this evening. Okay, so uh, Mr. Bovee, please come up. Um, we have some procedural issues to discuss. Yes, we do. First. Good evening, sir. Come, come right up and have a seat. Okay. okay. Yes. Um, this application, first of all, why don't we get your appearance, sir, give us your name. My name is Gene Ebenbovil. Thank you. And Mr. Raffetto, we want to enter your appearance for the record. Yes, Frederick Raffetto from the law firm of Ansel, Grimm and Aaron, and we are the city attorneys for Asbury Park. Thank Mr. you. Liebling? Yeah, Charles Liebling, uh, Windows Marks Lane in New York, representing um, two property owners within 200 feet, Dan and Christine Smith, Joseph Palato, and Marine Craddock Palato. Are there any other attorneys here? Yes. Sir. Why did this attorney didn't notify me he will be present the He doesn't have to. Huh? He doesn't have to. Why? Because he doesn't. Just like you don't have to tell us whether or not you're represented. If you show up with a lawyer, I would let you have your lawyer work with kids. Huh? Okay. Um, okay, procedurally, uh, may I address... Please, uh, Mr. Serpico. Okay. We have to... We This case could very well turn into a D1 use variance and or possibly a D2 
extension of a non-conforming uh, non use, but not likely. Okay, so the law requires for a D1 use variance that you have five affirmative votes out of however many members are here. Our typical board is composed of seven members. So you're essentially allowed to get two negative votes with five, and you could still get your use variance. Okay. Unfortunately, this evening, we only have six members. We have historically, in the 26 years that I've been here, or 27 years that I've been here, the board has always afforded every applicant or attorney the opportunity to have a full board so that you have the benefit of seven votes for your application. We cannot provide you with six, seven votes this evening. We can only provide you with six. Legally, we can proceed if you wish to proceed, okay? But it's your choice. If you don't wish to proceed without a seventh member, then we will adjourn the matter for you to come back another night and have seven full members. And that would be done for anybody else besides you in this room, anybody else, every citizen that's come before us since I started on January 1 of 1995 has been afforded the opportunity to have a full board. The only wrinkle is that your application involving a D variance has to be decided by the board within 90 or 120 days, I forget which, from the date the application has been deemed complete. If we carry you beyond the month of November, which there are no other meetings in November, we will be beyond the time frame, as I've been advised by the staff, and that we don't want to do that unless you give us the consent to hear this beyond the time frame. So it's your option. You can proceed if you like, or if you want an adjournment to get a full board, we'll do that, but you have to extend the time within which the board can vote on that matter until you come back. Any questions? No. Okay. What is your choice? You can proceed. We would like to proceed yes. with the six members, then that's fine. Okay. Uh, then you, you may have a seat, sir. You can have a seat. Uh, so we will proceed with the application. The application, as I understand it, Mr. Oh, let's Mr. Get Mr. Bovio? Oh, no. Can you please, yeah. please take the seat up. Oh, yeah, you can sit here. You can sit yeah. Let's get Donna sworn in. <coughs> Okay, Donna, please raise your right hand. You saw the testimony about the witness matter, the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I did. Please state your name for the record and tell us your affiliation with the board. Donna Millett, uh, Clark Keaton Hintz, consulting planners to the board. Okay. Now, before we get started, I would like to enter into uh, the record on behalf of the board a number of documents. Okay. The first one would be a true copy of a zoning permit issued to which I assume will be a predecessor in title to Mary Ann Perzell by Dave Roberts, who used to be the uh, planner and zoning officer here in the city. And I believe the date on that is August 1, 1986. And that indicates that the existing use is a four family. Uh, and so that, that's that. Okay. The second document, and we'll make that B1, if you don't mind. The second document that I want to introduce is a resolution from this board from 1994, April 12th of 1994, for a uh, use variance or an extension of the existing non-conforming use that was filed by Mr. Bovell, uh, and that was a resolution of denial. And it appeared to me in the reading of this that the application is similar to the one that's here, although it may not be exactly the same. I think that there's more to this one than before. There is another zoning certificate of compliance uh, issued by Janice Dees on March 29, 2000, which reiterates uh, the same uh, finding uh, that the first zoning permit uh, did that was issued by Mr. Roberts. Technically, that zoning permit would control if there was any differential, but they're consistent. After that, I would, let's get B3. Yes, okay. B3. B3, is that three or four? That's three. The certificate was B3. Okay, and then B4 will be a letter dated August 4th, 2020, from uh, Mark Siegel, who was then the zoning officer to 
Mr. Uh, and Mrs. Bovell uh, regarding uh, an interpretation would need to be made and a use variance application. So, sir, would you like to see these before I give them to the secretary? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, additional documents from the board, uh, whatever the next B is, B4 or 5? B5. B5 is the uh, planner's report for this project, authored by uh, Donna, Sullivan, Donna Miller and Michael Sullivan. Sorry, almost heard you married to Michael. Uh, dated October 26th and updated November 1, 2021. Uh, Donna, is this an act? This is your report, correct? Yes. True and accurate representation of what we did. Okay. Uh, so I'd like that to be entered as an exhibit. Have you seen a copy of this, sir? No? Let me see. Let me see. It, it was emailed to you, Mr. Bogo. Okay. It's been represented by the board secretary that a copy of that was emailed to you, sir. I don't have it, but it's not a problem. It kind of is, but... No, I don't have it. I never see it, but it's not a problem. Let's swear in the secretary. Please raise your right hand. Some swear testimony about the goodness matter and the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Thank you. Please state your name for the record and your affiliation with the Zoning Board of Adjustment. Irina Gasparian. I'm the board secretary for the Zoning Board of Adjustment. Okay. Are you familiar with this report? Yes, I am. Okay, and it's the, revi the revised report, not the original report? Yes, sir. And did you, in fact, email a copy of this report to the applicant? I did, oh. to the applicant and Mr. Passman on... Sorry, just one second. Okay. And I'll give you the date. <coughs> November 1st, 2021 to JNBE, I'm sorry, at the AOL email and Mr. Passman and Tamara Bovell, uh, Michelle Alonzo and CC Jack Serpico. Okay. The report also indicates that copies were sent or provided by uh, Donna's office to Board Secretary, myself, Board Engineer Jason Fischer, Donald J. Passman, as well as uh, the applicant. We're just checking to follow up on that. Yeah, it's a little slow, sorry. That's okay. You let us know when you get to it because you established that it was sent uh, by the Board Secretary. So 
So the only thing I'm kind of curious about is the copy that you have. Yeah. Does not have Michael's initials on it. Okay. And the copy you sent had Michael's initials on it. Okay, well, whatever. Yeah, That's fine. That's, that yeah. Okay. Next uh, item marked for identification are two are two court orders of so the Superior Court, Law Division, Monmouth County, because there is a pending matter that the board is not a party uh, to that case. It doesn't involve the Zoning Board of Adjustment. Uh, it's uh, a plaintiff. Uh, I assume it's Mr. and Mrs. Bovin versus the City of Asbury Park. Uh, then they, there's evidently a condemnation proceeding or something or other going on over there. But in the one of the orders, the judge ordered that the board zoning board of adjustment is to receive an application for development from the applicant and proceed to hear it. So, uh, and I assume you have copies of these court orders. Yes. Okay. All right. So, that's that. So. That is exhibit seven. Yeah. Okay, so let me give these to the secretary. I'll get it. Oh, okay. All right, so <clears throat> uh, either myself or Donna can outline what the procedure, how to proceed, and what we're here for for the various forms of relief. Um, it, it would be fine. You do it, Jack. I think it would be a little bit. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. In in the first instance. And if I, if you think I made a mistake or you need, you have any questions, stop me. Okay. You can please do so. In the first instance, uh, there is a request for an interpretation of the zoning officer's opinion. The zoning officer opined that the applicant does not get the benefit of Chapter 30-80.4 regulation of non-conforming uses. Subsection A1. Okay. Uh, in the second instance, the applicant was advised to get a D2 variance. The applicant is noticed for both a D1 or a D2 variance. Whether or not a D1 variance is required will depend on how you interpret this ordinance. Okay. So I'll read the ordinance to you. And it's in the report of uh, CCH. A, no existing building or premises devoted to a non-conforming use, which we have, shall be enlarged, extended, reconstructed, substituted, or structurally altered, except when changed to a conforming use or as follows. One, restoration. Except as in paragraph two below, any non-conforming use or structure damaged by fire, casualty, or act of God may be repaired, restored, reconstructed, or used as before, provided that the area of such use of structure shall not exceed the area which existed prior to such damage, and the cost of necessary construction, alteration, or repairs does not exceed 50% of the assessed value of the structure. All repairs shall be commenced within one year after damage occurs and shall be completed within two years of such date or such use shall not be rebuilt except as a conforming use. So, with that as a backdrop, uh, I think we'll... we'll Does everybody understand what that means? Yeah, I'm going to take care of that. You, any questions? Okay, anyone? Mr. Bovillo, do you understand the ordinance? I understand the ordinance, but... No, don't, don't. If you all right, go ahead. I don't want you getting into your case just yet. Okay, no, okay. okay. All right, all right. I just, if you have any questions on the ordinance itself or any okay. questions for me, that's fine. Okay. So, since this is the case, the way, the way that this should flow and do it properly is I'm going to have the city go first because the city is going to give you a chronological, hopefully, a chronological sequence of events as to what occurred. Thereafter, we have to decide, they, well, here, we're here from this gentleman, and we have to decide in the first instance what is being applied for, how it fits within this, or how it doesn't fit within this. And B, more importantly, I'm not worried about the 50% situation. I'm more concerned about the timing, and that was outlined by the, uh, the city and the zone, zoning officer as to whether or not they occur. So why don't we have Mr. Bogle uh, step down and we and have a seat and we'll bring up city attorney and he can bring up his witness 
And Mr. Bover, if you want, you may sit in the front row so that you can hear exactly what's going on. I want to make sure that you have uh, no obstructions. Thank you, Mr. Serpico. With me this evening is George Seeler, the construction official. George, can you please join me? Jack, let's uh, swear in, Mr. Yes, Jack, let's just get to my notes. Sir, please raise your right hand. You solemnly swear that the testimony about to give this matter be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I do. Please state your name, spell it, and give us your affiliation with the city of Asbury Park. George Sela, S-E-L-A-H. I'm the construction official and the electrical subcode official. Thank you. Mr. Otero, would you please proceed with your witness? Yes, thank you. Uh, once again, my name is Frederick Raffetto and I'm with the law firm of Ansel, Grimm and Aaron, and we are the city attorneys for Asbury Park. My purpose of being here this evening is simply to elicit some testimony from Mr. Sela regarding the timing of events which transpired following the occurrence of the fire, which happened at the subject property on March 7th of 2019. The city is not taking a position with regard to the applicant's variance application. Rather, we're simply here with regard to what activity by way of repairs was undertaken within one year of the fire and also within two years of the fire. My understanding, the city at one point condemned the property and uh, actually hired an outside firm to demolish the site. Is that correct, Mr. Rufetto? The city was in the process of doing so. Mr. Sela had issued a notice of demolition under chapter 13 of the city code because of the dilapidated state of the structure, uh, which was still in existence two plus years after the occurrence of the fire. And the city had retained uh, a report from structural engineers at TNM Associates who serve as the city engineers. And those engineers had done a report indicating that the remaining structure uh, was unsafe and recommended demolition. And Mr. Sela sent the property owners a notice requiring demolition within 30 days. And if they failed to demolish the structure themselves within 30 days that the city was going to undertake the demolition on its own. The 30 day period came and passed, at which point in time the city did retain contractors who were preparing and undertaking the necessary steps in order to demolish. There are a number of steps, as you may know, in order to effectuate a demolition, um, one of which involves checking for asbestos, turning off all utilities, and they were in the process of those activities and a complaint was filed by the property owners before the Superior Court of New Jersey seeking a restraining order to stop those activities, at which point um, the court entered an order temporarily restraining the city from proceeding with demolition until hearings were held. Hearings were subsequently held and the court uh, maintained the restraints preventing the city from demolishing the structure but requiring the property owners to undertake certain actions to secure the property with a fence, a barricade around the entire property and to undertake certain other steps including making an application for development before this board. Thank you. Actually, actually, that is not relevant to what your analysis is under the statute. I, I appreciate that. Thank you, Jack. Okay, so uh, Mr. Sela, um, once again, would you please state your name and spell the last? George Sela, S-E-L-A-H. And what is your position with the city of Asbury Park? Construction official and electrical subcode official. And how long have you served in these capacities? I've been the electrical subcode official since 2006 and the construction official since 2009. Do you hold any licenses in the state of New Jersey to serve in these capacities? I hold all licenses that are applicable to my offices. In your employment capacities with the city, are you familiar with the property located at 1117 Sunset Avenue? Yes, sir. And have you had any involvement with that property since the fire occurred on March 7th, 2019? Yes, sir. When did that involvement commence? On the morning of the fire, I was called by the fire chief and I came down and I looked at it and then I called the city manager and had the city manager bring TNM associates over who were the structural engineers for the city. They went over the, over the entire property, looked it over. And at, at that time I issued Mr. Beauville, an order for an eminent structure and 
Once an eminent structure is nobody can occupy the building and nobody can be in the building until further notice. So by issuing that notice of imminent hazard, um, did you consider the property to be um, not in a habitable um, shape? Oh, definitely not, it wasn't habitable. And did the property owners comply with your notice? Yes, he did. Has the structure been vacant since then? Yes, sir. During the course of the next year, were any permits applied for regarding the property? I believe it was September that they applied for a permit. They had originally applied for a permit to repair, but they had no plans and no zoning approval. So I gave them a permit to clean the property up and clean the inside of the building up. And a couple of months later, they came and they wanted to put vinyl siding on the west side of the building, and we issued them a permit. Would you know the, if I may, would you know the date of the second permit? I have copies of both permits, and I, I have enough copies for everyone. I'd be happy to have them marked and to uh, provide them. Sure. Okay. Mr. Steeler, you said you, bought, you, you gave a permit to put vinyl siding up on a burnt-out building? Sir, they, require, they asked for a permit to put it on that side of the building, and the UCC doesn't say anything that I can't give them a permit. It was never put up. It was actually taken back to the supplier when they decided that it just wouldn't work out. But there's no reason to deny them a permit for that. Okay. As an unsafe structure, though, it has a permit to put vinyl siding on. One wall. The okay. west wall. <laughs> it just seems kind of contradictory to me. It, it did to me too, sir, but you know what? All I can do is follow the UCC. Okay. All right, please proceed, Mr. Raffetto. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Sela, I'm showing you a copy of the first permit that you referenced um, uh, from September of 2019. Yes, sir. Um, can you please identify what is cons part of the four-page document that I've given to you and which I've distributed to everyone else as well? Well, the first two pages are what do we call the jacket, which is the application in itself. And the second two pages of the construct small construction is to permit showing that you paid for it, the receipt showing you paid for the permit, and the second part is to permit for the work that they had applied for. And can you clarify for the record once again, what particular permit request was this for? Location or what was No, the, 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 oh. what the, the permit, work were they looking to perform? The, they were, all they were able to perform was clean up and make the building safe. They could not do any repairs because they had no plans and no permits. And I discussed this with the contractor and that's how it worked out. And what was the estimated cost listed on the permit for the work to be performed? $7,500. And was there a contractor identified on the permit application for the cleanup activities? Yes, there was. It was Cadet Construction from Neptune, New Jersey. And did the contractor make the application for the permit or did the property owner? Contractor. And now, Mr. Sela, do cleanup activities represent repair work? No, sir. Can you elaborate on why not? Repairs are something that's permanent. What they were doing was cleaning up fire debris and, and furniture and whatever was left in the house. That's all they had a permit for. Would further permits be required for actual repair work? Absolutely, <clears throat> and also plans from a licensed professional. And in your estimation, would repair work associated with the damages incurred by the fire at this property cost more than $7,500? Oh, most definitely. So following the issuance of this permit, was any cleanup work actually performed by Cadet and Sons at the property? I cannot tell you for sure because I was not in the building after that. I was only in the building one time the day of the fire. I do believe they put some things in a dumpster, but I don't know exactly what or how much. Okay, now Mr. Sela, you also referenced that there was a second permit that was issued during the one year time period after the fire, which was for exterior siding. Is that correct? Yes, sir. I have copies of the permit for exterior siding as well. That I'd like to have more. And um, Jack, what are we marking the 
construction permit. C1. And put that in a category. B, board exhibits are B. Applicants are A. City is C. Okay. So o will be for any objectors. So okay. this will be exhibit C1 and these permits will be exhibit C2. Mr. Bowles, did you get a copy of this? I did provide a copy to Mr. Bowles. I did. Okay, thank you. And now, um, Mr. Sela, can you please tell us about this permit for exterior siding? What did it permit? Permitted to put white vinyl siding on the west side of the house, which was still intact. And what was the estimated cost of this work? I believe it was $6,000. To your knowledge, was any exterior siding work actually performed at the property after the permit was issued? No, sir. None was done. Were materials delivered or any or it was just never ever progressed? Uh, I believe there were materials on the ground. I'm not, I, I wouldn't swear to that on the Bible. But I believe the materials were delivered and Con the contractor decided not to go ahead with the job. Don't, don't tell us what the contract. Unless you have first-hand knowledge, don't tell me that. Okay, I didn't say that. That's fine. No, only testify to what your personal knowledge is, and that's okay. It. And was this permit ultimately rescinded? Yes, the contractor sent the letter in and asked for all permits that were issued in his name to be rescinded. Mr. Seela, I'm showing you a copy of a letter dated April 14th, 2021, copies of which I'm providing to the board and all interested parties as well. Can you please read uh, that letter into the record? It says, to whom it may concern, please retract all permits on 1117 Sunset Avenue, Avery Park. I am no longer the contractor for this project. J. Cadet, Cadet and Sons Construction. And this will be marked into uh, evidence of exhibit C3. Besides the permits for cleanup activities and exterior siding, were there any other permits requested or issued for repair or reconstruction work at the property during the one year period between the date of the fire on March 7th, 2019 and one year later, March 7th, 2020? No, sir. And were there any repairs that were actually performed at the property during that one year period? To my knowledge, no. Now let's look at the following year, which would take us between March 7th, 2020 and March 7th, 2021. Were any permits for repair work applied for or issued during that time period? No, sir. Did your office ever notify the property owner that no permit applications for repair or reconstruction work had been received? I sent Mr. Bobell a letter telling him that it's been 15 months at the fire. I don't remember the exact date. But I got the letter right here. And Mr. Silla, I'm showing you a copy of a letter dated June 23rd, 2020, uh, from you to Mr. Beauville. Can you please read this letter into the record? And I'd like to have this marked. Dear Mr. Beauville, in reference to the above location, it has been 15 months since the fire. The construction department has not received any construction permit application to date for renovations, reconstruction, or alterations of this property comes to my attention that the property is in an unsafe condition and needs to be addressed by an engineer to the stability of this structure. Please supply this office with the engineer's report within the next 30 days, which would be 723-2020. Failure to comply will result in penalties. Any questions or concerns, please feel free to contact me. Truly yours, George W. Seela, Construction Association. And this will be marked into our C4. So, Mr. Steele, you've already testified to the fact that there were no repairs commenced or performed within one year of the fire. Can you state for the record whether the repairs at the property were completed within two years of the fire or by March 7, 2021? There were no repairs completed by March 7, 2021. Um, Mr. Serpico, I have no further questions for Mr. Seela. Does anybody on the board have any questions for Mr. Seela? Do the board professionals have any questions for Mr. Seeler? No. 
All right, we'll open it up to the opposing attorney, Mr. Liebling. Well, no, have, no, no, Mr. Mr. Boville goes first. Oh, okay. Mr. Boville, do you, you have any questions? Do you want to cross-examine the witness? <laughs> yes, Mr. Sila. My name is Jim Boville, in my conversation, my last conversation with you and me, you indicated. No, no, don't tell us what he indicated. You gotta ask him questions. I'm going to ask him a question what he said. No, no, no. You're, you're, you're telling us what he said to you. But go ahead, go ahead. You're not an attorney. Go ahead. I get it. Go ahead. Okay. He indicated to me. No, no. no. Ask him a question. I, I'm going to ask him a question. Well, you have to ask Did him you question. remember? Okay. Did you remember, Mr. Silla, you said me, you will give me a permit to make the repairs on my four legal families' house in Sunset? No, I did not ever say that to you. I said if, if... Did you remember how many times you told me the neighborhood complaints to your office call you every single day? Pardon me? The neighborhood, the people from 11, 17, 17 hours, the neighborhood complain to your office every single day people. call you and asking you to make the demolition of my house, to make me lose the benefits of my poor family's house. Did you remember you talk to me to tell me that? Excuse me. No one ever called me. The only thing I received was emails from the city manager, so no one ever spoke directly to me. Yes. Yes. Okay, I received emails from the yes. city manager asking yes. questions. I answered her and she... Did you, did you know... Let him finish. For, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, yes, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You can't talk to I answered her questions and she answered the questions of any of the <coughs> citizens that asked her. Okay. I do not address those topics. Okay. I can ask you. Yes. Did you know from the date of my house get fired, the neighborhood called your office, the city manager office, the mayor office, more than 71 times asking all of them to lay the demolition of my house? Did you know that? Uh, all I can tell you is the emails that I got from the city manager, and I couldn't tell you if there were three, five, or 12. I can't, I can't answer that question. Okay. Did you know three days after my house get burned, the headquarters of FBI in Chenton came over the neighborhood in the city of Asbel, the FBI. No, no, I'm trying, to, I'm trying to follow your question. As I said, did you know five days after my house get burned, the headquarters of Chenton, the FBI, came over the city of Asbel Park, over an investigation, they talked to you over the phone. Did you remember what you said to them? That's beyond the scope of his testimony. No, you're, that the testimony no, 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 he said. No, what, he, what the testimony about the no, that no, never he the gave, He gave testimony about that never the same thing. Excuse this me. Is not the story. Excuse me. He gave testimony about the chronological sequence of events. He didn't talk about any investigations from the FBI and the like. He didn't talk about anything like that. No, I at least that he never. Okay. okay. So the questions that you ask of the witness have to be within the, the, the testimony that he gave. If you want to bring additional evidence in at a later time that's relevant, you'll be able to do that when it's your turn. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You can talk to George. Mr. Bowen, do you have any more questions for Mr. Siegel? Siegel. Uh, Siegel. Uh, Did Mr. Silla remember he gave he issue a permit? Two permits. One for the cleaning, one for the for the demolition. There was no permit issued for demolition at all. Only permit was issued for the clean up the inside of the building. And the demolition. He's saying no. Just well, saying if you yes. want to call it demolition, I call it cleanup. And there's nothing I don't know what they demoed inside the building. I was never back inside that building, so if they demoed anything in there, they did it without a permit. Do you remember one Saturday? I forget exactly the day that I was in my I was there on a Saturday because I was called by my plumbing official who happened to be riding down the street, and they told me people are in there throwing things out the window. I came down here and I stopped them from working, and then after that, somebody came in and got a permit for the cleanup. That was it. Once the permit is issued, they can go in there and clean up at their own risk, not at the city's risk. 
How many permit did you issue for the for my house and sunset? Two. One for the cleaning, one for the demolition. One for the cleaning, one for the siding. And what what will be your what will be your next step? No. My next step? I don't have a no, next step. That's beyond the scope of his, of his testimony. Okay. What his next step is. That's not relevant for his no. next step. He told us the next step. No. Do you have any further questions, Mr. Yeah, Bobby? I'm sure done. You're done? Okay. All right. All right. Mr. Liebling. He, oh, I have a question. Okay. You, you have no questions? Any members of the public not represented by counsel have any questions for the witness? Okay. Seeing none. All right. The board has no further questions. The witness can be excused. Thank you, Mr. Sealer. Thank you, Mr. Rafael. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. Okay. Now, it's your turn. Mr. Bovio, please okay. come up. Yeah. Let's get you under oath and you will. Uh, let's get you under oath first. Uh, I'll give you this story. I'm sorry. Can I, can I ask a question, Mr. Shepherdko? Yes. In the absence of a determination by the board, um, as to whether or not this, the, the, that or, the ordinance that you read applies, will the presentation be for two different types of variances? No, there will be a determination by the board in the first instance whether or not this applies. Okay. If it doesn't apply. Okay, so right now this testimony relates to the, to right, the ordinance. Right. And, and I'm sure being a layperson, he's going to get into other testimony, understood, understood. but we'll, you know, we have to work with the gentleman, he's not an attorney, so he doesn't Thank understand you. what we understand. Thank you. Okay. On, on March, no, no, wait, wait. raise your right hand. Oh, I'm sorry. Do you solemnly swear or affirm, I, I, you don't have to swear, is that the testimony about the given is not to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I Please state your name for the record, spelling. G-A-N, including him like Mary, Jean Mary, last name, Bo, B-E-A-U-P-I-A. And you can sit down. You don't have to stand. If you want to stand, you can, but you don't no, have to. No, I don't. Please okay. proceed, Mr. Bovia. Yeah. In the first instance, you need to address how this ordinance, how you want, and your claim of how it should be interpreted. In the second instance, the board will, if you want to talk about result, uh, use variance and variances, we'll get to that. But initially, your first request for relief from the board is that this ordinance applies to you, I believe, unless you tell me I'm wrong. So give us your testimony based on this ordinance, uh, please. On March 7, 2019, the phone call we got us in my family, my house was on the fire. First, until this second, Nobody knows what happened to my house, how it get fired. Even the fire marshal, they don't know. And second, Mr. George issued two permits, one for the cleaning, one for demolition. And the third one, he indicated to me personally, Mr. Wovie, you go in step by step. After that, make a plan, I hire an architect to make a plan, I will issue you a permit for the, for the repairs or the reconstruction of four families' house. On March 22nd, 2020, because you know, between March 7th to March 2000, we have to wait for the insurance to make everything to get the money. We hire an architect, Mr. Passman. He finished with the plan on March 2nd. They sent the plan to the city hall. They received the plan. On March 5th, this governor, Mr. Murphy, declared a state emergency. My plan, my architect plan, stayed. And Mr. George, more than four months, never opened it between Mr. Sigo and Mr. George. They never opened it. After four months, they said to me, oh, oh, oh. You can't tell me what somebody else said. No, the city, the city. Who in the city? Mr. John okay, that and is Mr. Singo, okay. they said the house lost the benefits of the four families' house because after one year. They, played, they have the plan on March 2nd. 
The governor declared state emergency of March 5th. And after that, there is a lady from uh, 6th Avenue. Between March 7 to last date of a uh, 17 of October, she called city of Vazbe back 71 times. She meet with the city manager. No, no, no. No, I have to tell you that. No, you, you can't tell me that because I, the person that met, okay, but I, you can't tell okay. me what other. I, I can't lose the benefits of my for my family's house. They asked me for the plan one year before the fire date. The fire date was March 7. The plan come to the city on March 2nd, on March 5th. Of what year? 2020. Okay, go ahead. On March 5th, the governor declared state emergency of the COVID. Mm -hmm. The plan stayed between Mr. George and Mr. Singo. They never opened it. After four months, Mr. Singo wrote me a letter and said I have to come to the zoning. I said, why do I have to come to the zone? He said, yeah, yeah, one year you lost everything. They don't respect Mr. The state emergency on March 5th, declared by the governor. They don't respect on March 2nd, the plane is already inside the city. One year, one second to seven, five days before, and everybody plot. They said, I lose the benefits of more four families' house. And Mr. Singo asked me to go to the zoning. Every attorney I hired, they asked me 25, 50,000. The cheapest one was 7,000. I don't care about that. Okay. That's irrelevant to us. Okay, okay. What attorneys show. And after a few weeks, Mr. George Antiquette he going to demolish my house. Okay. And asking Mr. George, how? He said, you have 30 days. And when he said, I have 30 days, I know all the plots against me from the neighborhood to the people from the tower. First, from this house, I know my color. I have for my house at 1117 Sunset Avenue. Mr. William Gray called me. Excuse me, I have to tell you the truth. Hey, Shane. Stop. Oh, oh, oh. First, no, 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 no. Yes. The, this is all the problem happened. This is all the problem happened. I, I, I want to know. No, the board, this is. The board wants to know what you did during that two year period of yes, time. Yes, this is like that. You deserve the, pro, the, the protection of this ordinance. That's yes. what the board wants to hear. And when, okay, after they do what they call me, what they all did it. Mr. Lecky and the former court enforcement director came again. He said he got to close down my house. Who said this? Mr. Lecky and Robert Lecky and Robert Lecky and. Okay. Yes. When he said, I don't want to hear what other people told you. No, that's, this is true. All I'm not say, you know, you, you can't testify as to what other people told you. That not the people told you. Because, well, you just we you have, say a we have all, came to the house and We have something? all the reports by the Federal Bureau of Investigation. We have everything. Yeah, okay. We have everything. Okay. That's why today I survived the house is a demolition. Mm -hmm. And if... We're going that easy. If March 7, my house get burned, March, March 2nd, 2020, the plan is ready. On March 5th, the governor state declared state of emergency for of the COVID. That means I have a chance to make the repairs of all my four families' house. I'm not going to rebuild. I'm not going to increase. I'm not going to decrease. Yes, you are going to increase. Your application that you have filed with the city shows plans that you're increasing the intensity of the non-conforming use. No. Yes. The size of the yeah, no. the size of the building. You want to enclose a porch that wasn't no, done no, before. No, 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 no. Uh, then the plans that, are, that your architect submitted are incorrect. Uh, uh, your plans that you supplied to the city with your application show a house to be built, to be reconstructed, I'm finishing off the inside of the house and expanding the habitable space within the house 
into the front porch as well as the third floor. That's what you have on record. I have to talk to Mr. Bassman. Uh, you're here. I have so to talk like to Mr. I have yeah, to go talk. ahead. No, we're going to let you keep going, but that's what's on the record. No, so. I have to talk. I never know that. I have to talk to Mr. Bassman. The porch stay open. There is two porch, one enclosed and one empty. The empty one stay like that, and the closed one, we, we're going to do a better design the closed one. And after that, yeah, I have to talk to Mr. Bassman. We have, I have to talk to Mr. Bassman and the plan. We 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 should make a plan to do the repairs of four legal families house. And when Mr. George declared he want to demolish my house. I call the city, I file a complaint against the city on free wall, and the superior judge asking me to come to the zoning. And the headquarters, FBI in Shenton, asking me to come to the zoning. Because he said, the plan is March 7, one year, five days before March 7, and the March 5th state emergency, why do I lose the benefits of my four families' house? First, my house is a grandparent's house. It's built before zone, before code. I have a lot of chance to reconsider for me, please, the benefits of my four families' house, legally. One second. <clears throat> Mr. Bowiel, why didn't you submit any plans to do uh, the rebuilding of the structure in 2019 when, this, when the fire occurred? No, well, it's easy. Because of the insurance. We have to wait for the money from the insurance. They are asking every paper, everything, everything. They're looking for everything. They ask for everything. We have to submit everything before they send the check on my name in the bank. After that, they would Were you aware that you had a year to begin? Yes, yes, yes. This is not, that take about exactly four or five months before the bank inspector come from Maryland to come to inspect the property. After four months or five months, they came inside, make picture, do everything. And after that, they have a, the insurance asking me to get a permit on my pocket to clean every from the fire before they can come inside to make the pictures. But this time, the COVID, everybody's scared. Everybody what? Scared for the COVID by this time. Everybody's scared for the COVID, yeah. Mm. <coughs> Unfortunately, I, I can't really make much comment on COVID. Destruction was still ongoing through the whole COVID crisis. So, I, you know, as an argument, it really doesn't hold up well. They even, they scared to touch even the plan I bring to the city. Is there any proof documentation that this hit the city on the 3rd of March of 2020? I see that we have a letter from Mr. Kassman in here claiming that construction documents prepared for the building permits and the reconstruction alterations completed and dated March 3. Due to the pandemic, the drawings could not be submitted to the building department. So were they submitted or were they not? They submitted and after that they give me a copy to bring by hand to the people. But you realize, though, that the plans that were submitted, unfortunately, were outside the scope of the ordinance. We don't know that. No, we do. For the building permit. Oh, no, not for the building permit. He's talk I don't think he's talking about I'm not talking about the building permit. I'm talking about the plans, the architectural plans. But there were, but Mr. Sela, I believe, testified that the, there were no plans submitted that there weren't sufficient plans submitted to create a 
proper permit. The plan submit before March 7. You know, after that, they said, I don't like that. I don't like this one. I don't like that one. Every time Who's they they, but the city, maybe Mr. No, no, Silla, no, no. Maybe, the city who? maybe Mr. Silla, maybe Mr. Silla. You can't give me a maybe. If you know, you have to tell me who it is. If you don't know, you they can't say no, no. The plan go to two departments. I get that. Zoning and construction. Correct. I think this is Mr. Silla. Mr. Silla. My last conversation when he received the plan, he said to me, I'm waiting for the zoning. Okay. That means you, you're waiting for the zoning. The zoning has to send him some and say something. Okay. All right. Anything else? Oh. Anything else? No. I mean, if there's. What I want to say and what I want to. I ask what the law asking me to do, what the superior court asking me to do. Came to the zoning board, they will vote for me to make the repairs on my four families' house. Superior court didn't say that. They, huh? said, they said you to come here with an application for development. They didn't say that the zoning board's going to vote for you to be able to repair your house. They said they wish. I read the court order. You're here for what you're here for. They said they wish. Like I wasn't at the hearing, but that's irrelevant to me. What's relevant to me is the stat is the ordinance and what you did factually and what your architect did factually. That's what's relevant to you. And well, so that's what we have to consider. First, I have to see. By tomorrow, next week, I have to set up an appointment with Mr. Passman to discuss the plan because I never know he asking to enclose You the, didn't see the plans that he submitted before he submitted I them? saw the plan, but we never talked about the enclose of the porch. I never know that. Okay. I have to talk to him. Does anybody on the board have any questions for Mr. Bobbio? Yeah, I do. Mr. Bobbio, have you been paid for your repairs yet? If I paid for have the repairs? you receive money from the insurance company for the repairs? Yeah, I give some money to Mr. Cadet. Uh, when did you receive money for the repairs? Oh, I received the first check for the cleaning, a second check for the demolition, and I received a third check for the roof and the structures. When? Ah, uh, I, I can tell you exactly the date, but I know I received a check, I forget the okay, date. Okay, then why haven't we started any repairs after receiving the money? Mm, because we have to get our proof. We wait, we receive, when we, when we, I submit the plan to Mr. George, waiting to get our proof before the contractor start make the repairs. But didn't Mr. Cadet send a letter to the construction official that says he's no longer the contractor? This is this afternoon now. I know that. I never knew that. Even my friend told me, why Mr. Cadet do that? He never sent you a letter. Because the last time I saw him. Yeah, no, no, you, no, no, please. No. No, no you're not under oath. You can't speak yet. Okay. Okay, so you received money. Did you give Mr. Cadet any money? Yes. He has a check for $90,000 balance from his account. $90,000? Yes, sir. Yes. The check to Did start. You, no, no. We're not, uh, it's not relevant. Your, your issue with Mr. Cadet, uh, that's a whole other can of worms, so to speak, that between you and him. It's a private contract matter. What we're concerned about is the, whether, the time or not, whether or not the ordinance applies. And you, it's your burden that's over, to That's all we're, we're, we're here to do yeah, right now. Yeah. Um, okay. Any other testimony with regard to the ordinance itself? No. Okay. Does anybody else have any yeah, questions? I, I have a question. Uh, so you said these plans were submitted 
March 2nd of this year, right? March 2nd, 2020. Oh, March 3rd, 2020. 2020, right. Yes. So that was within the year. Yes. Now, were these the plans that had the enclosed porch that you weren't That's aware that they were going to be enclosed? That, no. Mr. Passman, we see two, three hours and two different days. We, he read the plans to me. I ask him question. He, I never remember he told me enclose the porch. He asked him to enclose the porch. How about the third floor? No, third floor, there is no porch in the third floor. No, no. <laughs> did, did, were you aware that he was submitting plans that showed construction on the third floor? Yes, the third floor is included in the house. Right. Go ahead. The, you want to ask a question? No, no, I just wanted to clarify. They, he would have had to show changes on the third floor because right. that's where the damage was. Right. He may not have been able to discern from the plans that there was additional yeah, floor area being renovated. I don't know that. that I know. Well, that, that's supposition, that's, Donna. You can't make that supposition. Where, where I have a question for you. Prior to the fire, where did the occupants live in that structure? And the third floor, no. There is the house, that four families house, four families, this fire start in the third floor. Well, I didn't ask that. I asked where did, the, where did the occupants live? After the fire? Within the house. After the fire? No, before the fire. In the house. Yeah, but where in the house? Nighttime, it was nighttime, the people sleeping. No, I'm asking you where, what they occupied within that house prior to the fire. Where were the, First where and were second the floor, correct? Mm -hmm. First and second floor. Yes. Not the third floor. No, the third floor got people, yes, yes. How okay. long have people been occupying the third floor? All my entire life, I have the house. Okay. And you did not authorize your architect to do any expansion of the structure or enclosing of the structure, similar to the application you made in 1994. I have to talk to Mr. Pass. No, I'm asking you a question about what you said, not what he said. No, I, I don't know. So that. he went and drafted plans that we have that show the front porch being enclosed. And even though you said you went over those plans, you know, you had no knowledge that he was going to increase that? No, no. I don't have that. Okay. So you, you, you paid for plans you don't know anything about? I pay for the plans. I assume. You sure. would have to pay your architect, correct? Sure, I pay, sure. So, but you don't know what he put in your plans. We see two or three times. It's a part of my life, the Zizai house. It's but you're telling us that you do not know what your own architect He didn't tell me that. He didn't tell me if How he How could he not tell you what was in your architectural plans, Mr. Bowman? No, he didn't tell me. That makes no me. sense. He didn't tell me, Mr. Oh, Mr. Okay. What's your name? Oh, okay. I'm the chairman. He, but he didn't tell me, Mr. Chairman. He didn't tell me that. I never remember. So he went ahead and designed a site without your approval? He didn't tell me that. I never, never remember I had a conversation with I, I just, I, that's hard no. to understand. No. Mr. No. Mr. Pivel, are you aware of one of the <clears throat> paragraphs that Mr. Passman has in his letter dated July 23rd of this year that says project description, reconstruction of fire damage for family structure in R1 single family zone. The new apartment plans similar in size to existing units are being modernized in their layouts and finishes. Are you, you're copied on this letter. In here he says similar in size. Did you know they were going to be similar in size or the exact same size, a little smaller, a little bigger? Did you have these conversations with Mr. Passman? The same size. The same size? Yes. Not similar in size, but you? No. So he went ahead and designed a site without your approval? We don't know. You had to approve your plans. I have to look at the plan, then I have to talk to him because it's about to be Four months. I have to talk to him tomorrow. I would I like to talk to Mr. Passman as well. I have to talk to sit and talk to him. I, I would love for Mr. Passman to be here to be able to uh, answer his own questions. But that's, that's not 
I understand. First, we have to first decide on the time frame. Well, the time frame. So the, the architectural plans are secondary. Are you aware that he submitted these the plans that are before the board on in June of this summer? This year? No, this is in March. So I'm just going to clarify. So the plans that the board has for review were drawn June 28th, 2021. So they could not have been the plans that are alleged to have been delivered to the city in 2020. So there, the, we had no plans in 2020? I, I don't know Maybe what so. happened yeah. prior to the zoning board application, but Mr. Boville testified that Mr. Passman made a submission right. in 2020, right before his one year deadline. We don't know what was in that package. We don't know where it ended up. We don't know what happened except for Mr. Boville's testimony that in October, after sitting for four months or whatever, Everybody said no. Oh, Mr. Passman in his letter says that they were not submitted. There's a lot of conflicting testimony. And but I, I just wanted to clarify, the plans that are presented to the board as part of the zoning board application were drawn by Mr. Passman on June 28th, 2021. There's no prior date. That's the date of the plans. So, so we should be not have been the plans. Should we be solely focused on the time frame here? and whatever documents that were submitted on the 3rd of March, which Mr. Passman says were not submitted. Mr. Bobel, do you have a copy of the plans that were submitted on March 2nd of 2020? On March 2nd or 3rd, I bring, me, I bring myself a copy. When I came to the door, it was closed. I have to look looking for someone going inside to give. I don't remember the name of the guy. He said, I'm going to give to bring the plan to Mr. George office. And but that but that's yeah. a, irrelevant as to the time frame for you to start your work on the structure, Mr. Bobby. Do you understand that? You are already past your one year start. Yeah, but I'm I am the beneficiary of state emergency. Nobody in the uh, office. Unfortunately, we cannot has, decide about a state of an emergency. Do you or have specific state of emergency executive orders from the governor? To yes, the I can find it. That's going to say that you were prohibited from. No, I don't have this one for no, you. No, that's what you, you're Mates. claiming. You're claiming the benefit of some state it's of public. emergency. It's public. You gotta listen to me. You're, you're, you're claiming the benefit of executive orders issued on a state of emergency. But you're not showing us those orders that say that would, pre that would back up your statement that you could not start construction because of those orders. You're just giving us a conclusion. You're not telling us the substance of the order that says you can't construct. The only thing, if you want, I can follow make an appointment to see the governor and explain him the sit my situation see the governor yes that's got nothing, no that's got nothing to do with no it. yes i can see the governor. no it's no you're here now you got to present a case and I, okay stop it please no we're going I'm, to I'm, reschedule reschedule it please i have to do what i have to do to explain this case to the governor and i have to go with the plan to explain him everything no because i'm the beneficiary of the state of emergency no. like everybody no. will either council have the executive orders issued on the state of emergency i i have executive order 103 governor murphy declares a state of emergency and a public health emergency effective immediately dated march 9th 2020 well, which was outside the one-year period march 9th i also have executive order 122 in which um, a, a stop to non-essential construction is entered. And 36 days later, Executive Order 142, um, that is lifted. So then what was the date of both orders? Dates of both orders. Get those. Uh, Executive Order 122 was April 8th, 2020. And Executive Order 142, allowing non-essential construction to resume, was May 13th, 2020. 
So that's a period of approximately 36 a days. 36 days. So the executive orders, the, the state of emergency orders that you're claiming will prevent you from constructing, reconstructing the house were only in existence for 36 days out of the two year period in which you would have had to start and complete your construction. One year period. You have one year to apply, and you, but you must complete the construction within two years from the date of the fire. And you're saying that the executive orders prevented you, the COVID executive orders prevented you from completing the house within the period of time. The only prevention was 38 days out of two times 365 days. So it's 700 and some days that you had to start and complete the house. You were only prohibited from constructing during thir a 38 day period. So the emergency orders from the governor do not prevent you or did not prevent you from continuing and rebuilding the house. I have to go to see him. Uh, no, this, that's an executive order that's gonna be- I have to go to see him. And- I have to go to see him. Uh, Does anyone else have any further questions for Mr. Colby? Board Professional, Donna, do you have any questions? Not at this time, perhaps after cross-examination by uh, either of the- uh, well, Let's start with Mr. Raffetto. Do you have any questions for Mr. Colby? Not at this time. I was just going to clarify when the governor declared the first state of emergency, which as I indicated was March 9th of 2019, not March 5th of 2019. I appreciate that. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Liebling, do you have any questions for Mr. Bovio? I, I don't have any questions. Um, I believe this testimony speaks for itself. There's an opportunity to um, sum up, as it were, before the board votes. I'd like that opportunity. Okay. Thank you. Um, does anyone who's not represented by Mr. Liebling have any questions for Mr. Bobil? Seeing none, I, I assume that's back to us, Jack. Yeah, yeah. You, you have a situation where you have a witness who's the applicant who's saying that his architect who submitted the plans, which are very pivotal to what you're doing, to whether or not the benefit of that, A, in the first instance, there's, there's a two twofold into twofold step two steps here, excuse me. I'm dry from the mask. First is uh, whether or not there was going to be a restoration to exactly the way that it was before. We have an issue that there's really an expansion beyond what it was before. This gentleman is saying that his architect had no authority to submit those plans. Is that correct? Yes, sir. So we have an issue there. The secondary issue is the timing issue, which is pretty straightforward. I don't think the gentleman alleges that he's completed the house within the two years because it's not done. So um, then if, so you, you got a situation where you may, you may need to see the art, you may not have to have the architect come back, you, at least initially, unless you just wanted to go right over that question and just proceed to the second one as to whether or not you feel he's entitled to the protection of the ordinance because of the timing or not, or not, not, of, uh, not entitled to it. I think the ordinance has been fairly clearly defined. He has not completed or started or completed construction of a site within the two year time frame. Right. COVID unfortunately has not played a role in you just providing plans and beginning any construction and preventing you from doing that, at least from what I have been told. I am not convinced, Mr. Beauville, that you have met the requirements of the ordinance. And based on that, I'm afraid I cannot agree that uh, in this situation that you still have a four family. And based on that, I think, um, from my perspective, I will ask the other board members for theirs. Uh, and we'll start 
whoever would like to give any interpretation of what they've heard. Um, I, I just, I, I find it hard that you don't have any proof that you submitted it on the second. You could have overnighted it with the return receipt required. You would have, you would have brought copies here, um, something to show what you submitted. I, we just don't have anything. I so can it's hard to just take I, your word without I can proof. tell you, this is three times I submit the plan to the city. First time during the time of COVID on March 2nd or March 3rd. The second time, this is on June. And the third time, this is last September. The three times I submit the, the plan to the city of Asbury Park. Where? where? You need to have some factual evidence of that, Mr. Bobill, and you have not provided it. When you give the plan, Mr. Chairman, they don't give you a receive. They can give you nothing. They just no, give no, no, the plan. No, you would have copies of those things. No, no. No, you would not. I give three plans, one to the secretary of Mr. George. They listen nothing. And on second, I give two plans to the zoning. Just give it. Did you give cover letters with those plans to these individuals? This, this, the last one. I have a cover, cover letters from the zoning. The last plan what I- What is the last one that you're referring I to? I can look in for you. No, I need to know now. Yeah, I don't have it now. Because the last plan, that the last plan we work together to come to the, the last Please plan. Please wait. Hmm? Please wait. Who, who you, I don't know who we is. Who, who you're referring to, we work together. Oh, the, from the zoning. The last plan I give to the zoning. Yeah, but- did, I give you two. You didn't work with Mr. Passman? Yeah, Mr. Plans? Passman give me the plan. I bring it to the zoning. Two, three times. Two times, me personally, I went inside, give it to the people inside the zoning. Customarily, and, when you go to an architect, you tell the architect what you want to do. There's a discussion, correct? Did you have a discussion with Mr. Passman at all about what you wanted him to do? No? We don't talk. Mr. Passman know better. He know the guy that has that plan, he has to do the plan, to draw the plan. And that's it. And you had no discussion with him as to what you wanted him to do and you at all? He said going to update the house. Update the house, that he said. Okay, well, uh, there's the plans on evidence in evidence that are submitted with your application. I assume you signed the application for this zoning board to come before the zoning board. Two times, yes. Okay. And you submitted plans with that application. Yes. Okay. The plans you submitted with that application show an enclosed porch, correct, Donna? Or uh -huh. show an enclosed porch. So you want to expand the the the, the use of the premises. And you it's under your signature with the application. So you didn't look at those plans mm -hmm. before you submitted them? For this enclosed porch. No, I didn't talk about that with Mr. Passman. But did you look at the plans mm -hmm. before you submitted them? No, I didn't look in this part. I didn't look in okay. this part. Okay. I tell you the truth, I didn't look at this part. I'm still stuck on March 3rd's application and what was submitted. I have not seen or heard any evidence supporting anything. I'm reading a letter from Mr. Passman that's conflicting the testimony that I'm hearing. So until we determine what was submitted on the third, I, I'm not feeling confident about this either. I'm sure that Mr. Passman would have record of the plans that he submitted. I would hope. Did Mr. Passman do those plans, Mr. Bobin? Yes, Mr. Chairman. So, and then what happened to them? That you submitted them and they are sure, gone. With his application, I bring three times the plan to the city of Asbury Park. First time I give to a guy going to upstairs. I, I know his face, but I don't know his name. Yeah, but this isn't a city issue. This is your issue. Your issue is is that you submitted an application with a set of plans from a licensed architect that are increasing the occupiable space within that structure. 
We don't know that though. We don't know the plans that were submitted on the third. We know the plans, the latest plans that have been yeah. submitted. Those we don't know the plans that were submitted on the third. Doesn't matter. Well, the architect ultimately submitted plans with the app. We submitted the plans with the application, unless. No, no, Russell is saying if we're sticking to the time period of March 2020, yeah. it could not have been these plans okay. that we're looking at right now. And that is what he's looking for. Where are those plans? What did those right. plans consist of? If they did not include expansion, you know, but at the same time, there's conflicting There's a lot of conflicting evidence. information in this letter from Mr. Passman about the March 3rd application. Okay. A lot of conflicting information. You want to he hear said, from Mr. Passman? He said that they were not submitted. He's using the word alteration, and he's using the word similar. I want to know what was submitted on the third, if anything was submitted at all. Yes. Um, can we recognize Mr. Lee? Sure. Okay. It's not relevant. The, 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 the ordinance has nothing to do with when plans were I, I would tend to agree with you, Mr. Liebling. I don't believe it's relevant either. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Well, you got the issue before you. Um, the ordinance, what's before you are... We have to decide what's before us. Yeah, exactly. And, and you've got it. the secondary issue is the timing. The gentleman is saying that he was somehow or other prevented or the city to fail to act. And you've got the other witness saying that this is what we have. You have to decide which version you believe in. There's no evidence for me to believe in yeah. that version. No, none for me either. So aside from the issue of Mr. Passman, you've got the secondary issue of uh, the timing. And based on that, you, you can make a decision that whether or not the ordinance applies and gets the benefit of the protection or not, that's fine. If you vote that it does, then it's uh, according to, oh, we can't proceed with the variance application for D2 expansion because he's saying that's not what he wants to do. But you initially, um, you, got, you got the decision, you want to make that decision, he's coming, he's got to come back. He's going to have to come back because you can't, yeah, the uh, witness is telling us that his architect shouldn't have done that. So we don't know if it's a D1 that he's looking for or a D2. But shouldn't we decide first on the ordinance? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. you can do that. You can do that. And then you, if you decide that, a D, that the provisions don't apply, then it's a D1. And he has to come back ready for a D1 to, to present his evidence for a D1 use variance with the correct plans. Mr. Passman cannot be the person that you call as a witness that will carry the burden for you for the proofs for a use variance. Do you understand the proofs required for a use variance? Legally? Yeah, I understand. You do? Yes. Okay. Board. You do. Okay. What what are the just to get just a general idea. Okay. Board. What what law would you apply for a use variance? What section of the municipal land use law? What section of the municipal land? First, the house was built before code. No. The house was built before the zoning board. No, that's it's for a non-conforming use. It's a grandparent house, grandfather's no, house. Have, I'm trying to help you. Yes, you have sir. to understand the D variance is the most complex variance and it has the largest burden of proof in land use law. That's why it requires five out of seven members to vote for it, not a simple majority. And you have to be skilled in land use law to understand the criteria and the basis for a board to grant you the D1 variance. And if you don't understand that and you don't know how to present that case, you're not gonna, you're, you're not gonna make it. It's not, you're not gonna get it. Unless you understand the criteria, planners, lawyers, we understand that because that's what we do for a living. But unless you come prepared in the future, when this gets brought back for a possible D1 variance, unless you come prepared, you will, you will either rise or fall on what you present. And that's, it's, it's, there's complex issues that you need to understand for a D1 use variance. That's the best advice that I can give you. Why don't you decide what you want to do in terms of the interpretation of the ordinance if you determine that a D1 variance is required regardless of the plans that were submitted? 
He's going to have to come back, but he's going to have to revise his plans. And, and then maybe we'll say it's not a D1, it's a D2. I don't know. Now, once it's, yeah, once, once it's, it's gone, gone, it's going to be a D1. So, yeah. But he can't come back with those, that set of plans that he's saying don't accurately depict what he wants to do. So from my estimation, Mr. Boville, I, I'm afraid I, I cannot see how you met the requirements of the ordinance. Um, you have not provided us with any substantial facts or paperwork to, to substantiate your claim that you have maintained your poor family by starting repair, by completing construction. So without that evidence, I'm afraid that we only have one avenue to take. We, we, we have that in the beginning, Mr. George indicated, he gave me two permits to start working in the house. One for the cleaning, one that for the demolition. That was not for repair or for the beginning of the construction. That was for cleanup and for adding vinyl siding to one side of the wall of your building. But that was never done. It's so done. Never, it's done. It's, 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 it's done. You added vinyl siding. Yes. They do the, they do the uh, demolition, take everything off from the Aside house. Aside from all that, did you come out to the you have to also have completed construction within the two-year period. You didn't do that, correct? Be because of the uh, COVID, they no, started... No, we already established that the they COVID restrictions... Everything. You claimed the benefit of COVID restrictions under the emergency powers by the governor, but the actual orders were only preventing construction for 38 of 730 days. What about the other 675 days? When I give, they keep it between Mr. George office and Mr. Zingo office for four months. They keep the, the, the application in the office. Okay. Never you have touch. to decide if you believe the other witness or you believe this witness in terms of what transpired in terms of time. It's a credibility issue. Because you're saying that you did all these things and that the city sat on your plans and that's why, the I'm, I'm characterizing it and tell me if I'm incorrect. You're basically saying that you tried to construct it and finish it within the two years, but the city, city officials stood in your way. They didn't, they didn't issue the permits or something. Yes. Okay. Where well, are the applications? The application the wasn't there. You have two applications I on have, the record. We have, no, I have a... Two application and three plans. Right. Where are the per where are the applications for the permits to reconstruct the house? That the first we submit the plan first before the application. Yeah. But that Mr. Judge asking, give me the plan. He sent it to the zoning. So then you never applied for a construction permit to reconstruct the house based on the plans. On the first plan, no. We waiting for the answer the reply from the zoning okay All right. the zoning never okay. 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 um yeah and decide the ordinance you got to bring him back for the uh if you're going to decide that he needs a d1 variance he's got to come back for that because he has no proofs you can't you can't use the uh, plans on record because he says they weren't authorized well be before we decide on the ordinance Perhaps, Mr. Liebling, you would like yeah, to yeah, say Yeah, we wanna, yeah, we'll, yeah, I'm saying that's going to be the make his case. I'm, I'm not sure it's necessary here, having heard the board's expression of their, of their concerns. I think you're, you're, you're aware of mine. Thank you, Mr. Liebling. Mr. Perfetto, do you have anything you would like to add? Yes, so uh, with regard to the ordinance, the language is clear. It says all repairs shall be commenced within one year after the damage occurs. It doesn't say that plans have to be submitted within a year. It says the repairs have to be commenced within a year and shall be completed within two years of such date, or such use shall not be rebuilt except as a conforming use, which would be as a single family home in the R1 district, which would require Mr. Bobill to get a variance in order to reconstruct the four family home there. So it's the position of the city that uh, Mr. Boyle did not comply with the requirements of the ordinance. Therefore, he has lost his rights to a four-family home and must apply for the appropriate variance and get relief if the board is so inclined to provide him with relief to allow a four-family home in a single-family zone. Thank you, Mr. Pleto. I, I believe the ordinance is quite clear. Can I ask him a question, Mr. Mm. No. No? No, you can sum up 
But we or any other members of the public who are not represented by council want to make a statement, a closing statement unless the attorneys do. Okay. You have to step up to the mic, please. Or come you can come up here if you like and come to this microphone. Please state your name and address. Sure, it's um, Tamara Bullville, 2136, Aldrin Road, Apartment 1B, Ocean, New Jersey, 07712. Um, I would just like to say this whole situation right here is um, a little uncertain, just knowing what's going on from the backhand perspective of everything. Um, the plans were in process to be submitted for COVID, but due to that emergency, I remember back in June, he did go to the city because someone did come say he needed to drop off the plans. Then we haven't heard for a while, but the whole situation at hand is um, the house needs to be rebuilt how it originally was purchased as a four family unit in a single family residential area. I understand why this is an issue, but this house has been this way since the 1900s, the way he purchased it. And all he's simply asking to do with this is to rebuild and repair the house as a four family, how it was, nothing more, nothing less, no addition. I'm just a little confused on that part where to say he's trying to expand. The main objective here is to rebuild the house for families originally, how it was, nothing more, nothing less. And I think that's where we have a little bit of gap of the communication what's going on, but going forward, I think Mr. Beauville would do the right thing and make sure he has all the proper documents and supporting information to come back again so we can get a better conclusion in a situation because it's dragging for quite some time. Thank you. Thank you. By the way, I didn't swear you in. Oh, Please, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put the card. <laughs> in front of a horse or behind the horse here or something or put the horse behind the cart please raise your right hand the, the testimony that you just gave do you solemnly swear that that testimony was the truth the whole truth and nothing but the truth oh, yes. thank you very much okay. sorry about that I lost track. all right so i think the only decision of the board tonight should be based on the ordinance construction uh either part a or part b and if you determine that there's a D1 use variance required, the applicant's gonna to have to come back, revise his application, do whatever it takes to get the appropriate application before the board. Okay. And if you, if you well, why don't we get the vote first and then I'll make the comment. Okay. Anyone else? No? Okay, so what's the pleasure of the board? Donna? What's the pleasure of the board regarding the ordinance, how it's construed, and does it apply or does it not apply? The protection of the ordinance. If you're I, I kind of made ordinance. my position fairly clear. Okay. So, does anyone else have any, any comments to make? No, I think that, that even if any any potential facts are considered in the light most favorable to what the applicant has presented now, and that he cannot meet. Uh, the time requirements for the commencement of the repairs, and that so that it falls. Any other comments? I in agreement. Okay. So I get a motion. I'll make a motion to, I guess, uh, that the ordinance applies in this situation. That you no longer have a four family due to the time constraints and the plans that were submitted. second that. Well, can you rephrase that? Yeah, rather, rather than the, uh, the plans that are submitted, because he's probably going to come back with amended plans. All right, I'll make a motion. Make it on a strict interpretation of the ordinance in terms of the time. All right, um, I'll make a motion that, the, that due to the time constraints that he has not begun repairs within one year, and has not completed the construction of the site within two years. And the plans that have been submitted before the zoning board are actually asking for an expansion of a non-conforming use in which that this ordinance it must be applied and you no longer have a fourth end. Is that better, Jack? No. No. You said the same thing, you just said it differently. Okay. The plans are a secondary issue. I need you to construe and interpret the ordinance based basically on time. That's the that's the primary issue. Is the time? Did, 
Are you satisfied that the applicant did what he was supposed to do in order to reconstruct the, the house within the two years? No, he has not met the time constraints. I as far as the variance is concerned, if it's, it's, then that's a different matter because he may come back with amended plans and not want to change what was there, and then it would be still a D one. Okay. So so stick to the st stick to the what's before us. We can't make a determination as to whether or not he wanted to expand the non-performing use because he's got conflicting testimony with the plans that are set right, I'm having difficulty with the verbiage. So no problem. So just go with the second part of the ordinance. Don't even address sure. the first part that I make a motion that the repairs have not commenced within one year time frame and that he has not completed the construction of the housing of the house itself within two years. Okay. I'll second that. Okay, I'm putting on one second here. Motion. Okay. Let's see, um, I'm play secretary. Uh, on the motion, Daniel Harris. Yes. Uh, Tim Slick. Yes. Uh, Wendy Glassman. Yeah. Bonnie Knock. Yep. Russell Lewis. Yes. Christopher Avalon. Yes. Six to zero. Do you understand what just happened? Would you like me to explain it to you? Explain to me. I understand. Uh, explain uh, to me. Okay. I want to be clear before. Okay. Here, the board has determined that you don't get the benefit of this ordinance because you didn't reconstruct the house on a timely basis. You did not meet the, the terms of this ordinance. So therefore, you have to have, you can only rebuild a conforming structure and use, which is a single family. If you choose to come back for your zoning application correctly, you will be required to obtain a D1 use variance to put four families there. Okay. And you will have to talk to Mr. Passman and you and he will have to get on the same page. How long I have to do that? You can do it anytime you like. It's because right now, uh, you can't do what you want to do. And you, it's been determined that you lost your well, mind. the only thing I have to do, I respect the decision. It's, but I reject the, the decision. Well, you can, I have to appeal it. You, you have to, you, I have you to can appeal. do whatever you want. I have to appeal it. Okay. Because this is it. not the situation. This is not. No, no, don't argue the case after the fact. No, I they believe the testimony of the other witness versus what you said. You didn't come in with the proofs that they asked for. You this just gave us the conclusion. We're done. I'm not going to. I'm not going to argue with the gentleman. Thank you so much for your time. God bless you. Have a blessed night. Thank you, Thank you Mr. Bobo. I have to appeal it. Okay. That's it. That I have to do. All my life in one house, I got the benefits of everything. State emergency, four families' house. No, Everybody is against me for my polo, and now it's a big All right, we're not done yet. Fred, wait, Yeah, why don't we? Yeah, I, I make a motion. I make a motion to end the meeting. Okay. Second. 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 All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Ayes have it. We stand adjourned. Okay.